Hi, Assalamu Alaikum and good morning everyone. Thank you for visiting my channel again. Abdurrahim here with you. So most of you know that tomorrow is EACBI exam. Okay, so European Society of Echocardiography, Adult Echocardiography exam tomorrow. So I know a few of you have already applied and you are preparing for your exam. So I thought, uh, you know, I was trying to make, uh, I was thinking to make a video from last two, three days about just to give some um, ideas about the exam, but I was busy. So I thought tomorrow is the exam. So I should, I should just make a short video just to give you an overhead. Maybe this would be helpful for you guys. And I would highly appreciate if you, uh, you know, see the video and then after the exam, if you think that this video was helpful, please write in the comments so it will be helpful. So I will try to add a few more things next time for the next people. Okay. So let's come to the exam. You know, the exam will be, most of you, you know that you will be going uh, to give the exam from your home proc through the ProctorView um, uh, software. So just be very careful that you should be alone in the room. There should be no noise in the room and you should not be moving so much or you should not be looking here and there again and again, okay? Because it they will stop your exam uh, immediately. So you need to be very careful with that, okay? They will do all the checks before. They will let you have the proper camera. You should have very good internet, okay, to run this exam. If your internet is not very good or internet is... Uh, getting disconnected intermittently then please try to arrange it before so let's come to the exam the exam will be consist of two parts the first part will be the reporting part where it will be 50 questions and you will have one uh, one hour and 30 minutes one and a half hour for this exam so in uh, you know they will show you in this uh, in this particular reporting one they will show you videos for for to to report so the re videos will be definitely related to the echo there will be no not much videos related to stress and there will be no videos about the uh, toe so you need to be mostly concentrating on transthoracic exam my personal experience is that um, uh, most of the people can pass this this side and then they fail the other one but uh, again it's uh, it depends upon because here you are going to see the echo which you see it every day uh, keep in mind that uh, mitral valve prolapse is a very important thing and you will have definitely one or two questions in this one, in the reporting one, okay? Then keep an aortic stenosis, especially the low flow, low gradient one because this is in the hype these days. Everybody talks about it, so you need to know about it. You can review the um, guidelines as well and then go with prepared one to let them know that whether this is... Uh, low flow low gradient or not or if it's a low flow gra low gradient what you are going to do next okay so you need to know about it then uh, mitral regurgitation is a very important topic primary secondary okay and uh, what could be the cause of mitral regurgitation this is also very important they will show you the videos maybe it could be an infective endocarditis prolapse secondary mr so they can ask you these questions okay and then about the right side, McConnell sign is a very important one. It usually comes from the, uh, this question usually comes in the exam. Okay. And then about the strain imaging, you need to keep in mind the infiltrative heart disease, the amyloidosis, you know, the cherry on the top. That question usually comes in the exam. And uh, then regional wall motions, you need to keep an eye that which regional wall is related to which territory. Okay. So that's very important. They will give you regionals, but they will not ask you that which wall is not contracting. They might ask you this, but this is very easy question. They will ask you which territory you think involved. So you need to tell about the territory. So keep in mind that you not only make yourself comfortable with regionals, but also the territories that which territory is uh, supplying to which area. Okay. And then Diastolic function is mainly, there are not a lot of questions from diastolic function, okay. It mainly, you need to cover the um, uh, valvular heart disease, uh, prosthetic valves, okay. They might give you uh, a mitral valve Doppler, okay, a velocity more than two. You are expecting pathological regurgitation, okay. If your mean gradient is high, then you are expecting a valve um, dysfunction or a stack valve or, you know, stenosis across the valve and uh, you need to keep an eye about the um, aortic valve high gradient why there are high gradients maybe a penis formation maybe a 
patient prosthesis mismatch okay so these are all things you need to keep in mind when you are going in then um, about the tumors you know the most common is the maxoma this also question come but this usually come in the theory side okay you will see it mostly on the atria which atria you will see it uh, most commonly so these are the questions you might see it okay so uh, i'm telling you which i get it from few people okay so uh, excuse me if i'm taking more time in that so these are mainly your uh, reporting ones i think i covered most part of it keep the guidelines in your mind when you are going to call it in systolic dysfunction when you are going to call it mild moderate or severe uh, systolic dysfunction okay uh, regionals you need to know about the um, territories as well then you come into the valve diseases when you are going to call mild moderate severe for mitral regurgitation for mitral stenosis okay when you are going to call it in aortic regurgitation in aortic stenosis how you are going to differentiate a low flow low gradient aortic stenosis okay or a paradoxical low flow low gradient aortic stenosis so these are the things then you come on to the tricuspid valve usually you don't get a lot of questions about the tricuspid valve itself but they ask you about the pulmonary hypertension or a pulmonary embolism case so you need to keep this in mind hypertrophic cardiomyopathy you might see one or two questions especially people say that they give you images of uh, apical hypertrophic cardiomyopathy so keep this in mind always keep an eye on the apex if there is a very severe hypertrophy in the apex or not okay so these are the things then you come on to the pericardial diseases they might ask you like what is the small moderate or the large size peri uh, pericardial effusion they might give you some images and they say oh the pericardial effusion here is uh, 15 millimeter here is uh, the 10 millimeter so you need to give an answer how much is it so you need to tell that it's mild moderate or large pericardial effusion so these are the things then uh, you will move on to your theory exam in theory exam you will have 75 questions and you will have one hour and uh, 50 minutes to answer these questions okay so this is uh, you will have about 10 to 15 minutes break in between these two exams okay please keep in mind that you don't need to like you you need to be ready within time okay if you will be spending more time then it's again the software and they will just reject your exam and then you know the confusion will increase for you that you need to write to them and these all things okay so let's come back to the questions again the same questions which i told you mitral regurgitation very important mitral valve prolapse usually mitral valve prolapse there are three four questions about aortic stenosis two three questions pulmonic valve they usually ask you about the velocity high, uh, like what is mild moderate severe criteria keep in mind that all the guidelines you need to keep in mind okay valvular is very important systolic dysfunction is the other one cardiomyopathies okay and then about the diastolic dysfunction how you are going to grade it so these are all questions you might see and um, theory exam will be you know 75 questions but usually what happens is that the first 20 25 questions are usually the tough one they will give you scenarios as well they will give you oh the patient came with this 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 and now you need to calculate it a very important thing is keep the formulas in your mind how to calculate aortic valve area how to calculate mitral valve area uh, continuity equation these all things try to uh, keep the simplified formulas in your mind so you can do them quickly they will give you calculator in the same software so you can use the calculator from the same software okay so that's it uh, you cannot close the software once you are giving the exam to use anything outside okay so that's another way so you need to keep the formulas in your mind and you need to understand how you can do it quickly pisa pisa calculations are also very important you will definitely have questions regarding the pisa calculations okay what is the you know uh, uh, what is the ero uh, how you will calculate the regurgitant volume regurgitant fraction these are all questions definitely come one two in the reporting and two three in the uh, in the theory one as well okay then how to calculate valve area you will have to keep in mind that about 10 10 to 15 question collectively from both exams will be towards your calculations okay pisa or valve area and then 
few of them will be like 10 of them will be related to mitral regurgitation, maybe a prolapse, maybe secondary mitral regurgitation, maybe uh, infective endocarditis, but they will be related to mitral regurgitation. And then uh, same like 10, 10 to 15 would be related to aortic valve, maybe aortic valve disease, AR, AS, or maybe a mechanical aortic valve. So these questions, these three, four topics are very, very, very important. Then you can have five, five, to, five to seven or 10 question about systolic dysfunction. So you need to keep in mind about systolic dysfunction, regionals, and again, territories as well. And then tumor, you can have maximum three, four questions, not more than that, okay? Uh, physics, there will be only four or five questions and it will not be very detailed physics. It will be simple physics about frequency, wavelength and these things. So don't go very deep into physics, especially if you are not very good in physics, just leave it and look at the other things at the moment. Okay. So I think I cover most part of it. Yeah, pericardial diseases, there will be definitely question asking you that how you will differentiate different pericardial if you are like mild, moderate or severe. Keep just go through the um, uh, constrictive pericarditis as well. What is the uh, difference between constrictive pericarditis and restrictive physiology, uh, restrictive cardiomyopathy? So you know what are the differences between them. So I'm just giving you a refresh thing just to look at these questions as well. Okay, um, and I believe this is all from my side. I think I covered everything, but I would highly appreciate that if you guys will write some questions which will remain in your mind that oh they ask about this thing they ask about this thing please write it in the comments so next time when i will be making another video i think the next time i will plan this video better and i will make a, a better video for the uh, next people who will be going for the exam but this time i was busy and i couldn't make it sorry for that and also very very good luck to the people who are going for the exam tomorrow we are all the whole family is praying for you guys and hopefully you guys will pass okay and uh, please come back to the video and let us know so we can share our knowledge with others as well and uh, now i will come back to the uh, another important aspect is that how you are going to take your exam okay how you are going to approach your exam this is very important okay most of our colleagues most of our uh, uh, you know people who are very good in echo but usually they fail the exam because they don't manage their time properly okay so they are very good in echo okay maybe they did only 40 questions and 30 35 of them are correct so they are very good in it but they take more time in the exam so i will give you some tricks how you can uh, you know manage your time so i would say that you know uh, in uh, in both the exam the first few questions will be tough so i would say that the first go you should just go reading all the questions okay and see which question you are clear about give the answer for example there is a question the aortic valve has three leaflets okay let's take you know about three leaflets what are the name of it or they are asking what is this leaflet name uh, anterior mitral leaflet posterior mitral leaflet you will have these sort of questions as well in the exam so you know these questions so in the first go you know, usually the uh, questions at the end are very easy as compared to the one who um, earlier on, okay? So leave the calculations, leave the difficult questions first in first year go and uh, do the easy questions in the first go. Then start again and see which questions you can do it easily, like calculations and these things which you know very well, do them. The third one is the question where you need to spend some time to think, okay, this happened, this happened. You know the scenario questions, if you are not clear about it and you, you are wasting time, do, do those questions in the third group. And then those questions where, where you don't understand, do them at the end, okay? And keep your time always running in your mind, okay, now I need to, don't leave any question because there is no negative marking. Uh, now another thing is that for example there is a question came and you don't know anything about the question okay you didn't get the answer you, you didn't understand the question then you go to the answers sometimes the answers will tell you about the question and answer itself okay for example if someone is asking you about a doppler and you don't know what doppler is it but suddenly you see aortic valve doppler you know that aortic stenosis doppler you know aortic stenosis doppler comes in cystine 
so you will look at the Doppler if it's not sisterly so aortic stenosis goes out so you know you need to choose from three instead of four then maybe it's a pulmonic uh, Doppler so pulmonic also stenosis Doppler comes in sisterly that also goes out now you need to choose it from two so first you was guessing from four so you was having 25 percent chance of getting correct now choosing from two will increase your chances to 50 percent so if you will answer correctly there are 50 50 chances you can answer wrong or right so your chances will increase so sometimes some questions where you are not having any idea about the question and answer but still you able to answer it and you can get the marks so don't leave any question think if you don't know about the question or you are not understanding the question try to read the answer and try to put yourself into the answer sometimes the answers will guide you towards the question and the answer itself okay so this is how you are going to time yourself and this is how you are going to approach your exam first i will repeat it first do the easy questions second do the calculations the one you know already the one you know you can do it quickly do those questions okay where you think that you might spend a little bit of time but you know how to do it do those questions third one is the one where you need to spend a bit of time and you are not clear about the question but still you have some idea about them the fourth one where you don't have any idea just go through them okay try to save your time time is very important keep an eye on your time okay i need to do this i need to do this oh i have 10 minutes left now finish everything okay good luck again okay keep um, uh, uh, these tricks in your mind and share your uh, knowledge with us at the end thank you very much bye bye